All right, and welcome back to the complete web dev series. In this chapter, we are building a procedural login and registration system. Uh, in this video, what we're going to cover is setting up our database connection and writing a function so that we can easily uh, send SQL uh, queries to our database and execute those. Um, and then we're going to finish up our form validation uh, by checking the database uh, to make sure we don't already have a user with, with a, e the same email address in it. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me just turn off my AC so it doesn't come on. All right, then let's switch over to this screen here. And I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that my server is up and running. So it's sudo opt lamp uh, exam start. Um, my computer did crash, so uh, hang on a second. You won't have to do this, but I have to. Okay, so now that my server is up and running, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure it is running. Okay, there we go. The one thing we want to do is go ahead and open another tab here and type in localhost php my admin. Uh, this will give us access to the database and we call this login. Um, and if you go to the users table, uh, we don't have anything in there just yet, but we're going to need that in just a moment. So go back to your other tab here. And what we want to do is start building out our function so that we can query the database and see if um, this exists. So let's go ahead and get started. Go ahead and go to your functions.php file. And um, we're going to create a new function here called that we're going to call query. Um, it's going to be a very simple function that just does a lot of the uh, grunt work for us for setting up our database query. Um, in this first lesson, what we're going to use is a built-in way that PHP has to uh, interface with our MySQL database, and that is called MySQLi. Uh, we're going to learn a much better way in the next lesson, uh, but for this lesson, we're going to use something called MySQLi. It's built in. Um, so let's go ahead and create our function here, and it's going to be called query. And this is going to take a couple parameters. For one, it's going to take a parameter called SQL, and that will be our SQL um, statement that we're going to pass in. The next one is going to be called binds, and we're going to give that a default uh, of an empty array. And we're also going to do one more, and we're going to do one that we're going to call execute only, and that will be a default of false. All right, so now we have the uh, open and closing curly braces. This will set up the function. Now it's an empty function right now, but this is the structure with these parameters that we're going to do. All right, so um, let's go ahead and uh, so where to begin? Let's start with the connection. So first of all, create a variable called database or DB. And uh, we use a built-in function called mysqli underscore connect. This will allow us to connect to the database. So the first thing that we pass it, the first parameter is going to be our uh, host that we, we type in. So type in 127.0.0.1. And that's going to be the same as localhost, but it will avoid a domain lookup. So we're going to use 127.0.0.1, and that's always going to be your local computer. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and put in the username, which in our case it's root if you've installed exam. And by default, uh, the next parameter it was going to be the password. But by default, the uh, password for exam is just no password, so we're going to use an empty string there. And then we need to tell it the name of our database uh, that we're connecting to. So in this case, we called it login. Um, so that will create our connection there. So MySQL I connect um, right here. MySQL I underscore connect. My, and I forgot my S there. MySQL connect. All right. So that's uh, MySQL I connect. And this is uh, the connection information. The next thing that we want to do is um, we want to go ahead and set up um, our statement. 
So what we'll do is we'll create a STMT, just short for statement, that's a variable. And then um, we use a function called mysqli statement init. Okay, and we just pass in our database connection there. So we're just passing in that DB. So this, this starts our statement here. Um, the next thing that we want to do, and let's just go stop for a second and talk about security. Um, so you may or may not have heard of uh, a little something called Johnny Drop Tables. So what can happen is, what happens if a user types in their first name, and then they hit semicolon, and then they say drop table users, something like that. If we're not careful, uh, a user, if they, say we were gonna insert this into the database, um, if we're not careful, the user can add a semicolon here, and then they can put in an SQL statement if they know SQL. And like this example would delete our users table if we had a users table in our database. Um, this is known as SQL injection. Uh, and SQL injection is basically injecting <clears throat> SQL statements into something that we weren't expecting it to be. So what will happen is to say if we're running an insert statement to insert this into the database, and uh, it hits this semicolon, that's going to immediately stop the execution of that line. Uh, and then it will follow it up with whatever they put here. So in this case, it's uh, drop table users. Um, so we don't want this uh, to execute um, as SQL. So what we can do is use prepared statements uh, and prepared statements allow us to do something called binding that uh, we will take this whatever values that are going to be inserted into the database from all these fields and we're going to make sure that they're executed only as a string and that it, no matter what's in there it'll tell the um, the my that my, it will tell MySQL do not execute anything in here as SQL so that the possibility of SQL injection uh, won't be able to happen because uh, it's going to view all of that as a string and not execute anything inside of that and so that's preparing the statement and using binds uh, in order to do that and that the binds are what we're going to pass in right here in this um, parameter here so we want to stop them from inserting SQL into our into our stuff using our forms okay so that's called SQL injection it's an attack that people use and so we have to protect against that all right so in order to do that we have to prepare our statement so let's go ahead and create a um, uh, a variable called prepare and we're going to use the my SQLI underscore uh, statement underscore prepare and that takes two things first thing we pass in is our statement itself and the next thing that we pass in for the second parameter is going to be our SQL query and that that we're passing that in right here into our function so that will prepare the statement and set it equal to this prepare uh, variable there. Um, the next thing that we want to be able to do <coughs> is something that's a, a little bit, um, how do we say it? It's just a little bit hard to set up and that's going to be um, basically what we want to be able to do. And let me just show you um, what the SQL query would look like. Um, instead of saying something like um, update users set first name equal to Curtis um, we don't want to do that instead what we want to do is we want to pass in a question mark right here uh, and this this whole thing so instead of that it'll pass in a question mark and then we're gonna pass in the actual values uh, into this binds array um, so that's ultimately what we're trying to do here. So the first thing we're going to do at the top of this function is go ahead and create a, um, a string called type. Well, this is a variable. And we're going to set that equal to an empty string for now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to need to loop through our binds. So this is going to be for each uh, value in our binds array. Um, we'll just say as bind. 
open and close our curly braces here. And then what we want to do is we want to concatenate onto this typecast string an S. So type cast dot equals, and that will be a concatenate concatenation uh, operator here, where it will set this equal to whatever this is plus this S. So we're going to have a series of S's basically. So this typecast array will ultimately look like this. Say we have five uh, five elements in that array. This will actually look like this. One, two, oops, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's what this is going to look like. But our for each is going to do that once for each element in that array. Okay, so there we go. Um, I know this is a little complex. Try to follow along. But if if you get a little lost, just Rewatch it, but uh, ultimately uh, we're only going to have to use this one time. So try to understand it just right now. And what did I do wrong here? Oh, this is a capital C there. So typecast. All right. Once we've done that, um, we're going to use a function that actually adds these binds. So it's MySQLI statement bind. Oops. Bind param. And we, what we're going to do is pass in our statement. That's the first thing. And then we're going to pass in our typecast. So this, this typecast basically says, hey, this is a string. And you could use others besides S uh, to make integers or whatever. But we're just going to make all of our strings. Uh, so typecast. And then for the last parameter, we're going to actually um, destructure our array. I know we haven't talked about this, but we're going to use the dot, dot, dot binds and uh, what that's going to do is actually create it's going what it, what it will do is take for each element in our binds it's going to add that in as a parameter into our mysql statement bind param thing here um, and so we're just going to say dot 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 binds and that will destructure this array and add each element as a parameter i don't know how else to say that um, destructuring is just a fancy way of saying hey for every element in here uh, use it as a parameter okay um, so that's what we're going to do there and then what we're going to do is we're going to actually run it by we're going to set up a variable called result and we're going to say my sqli statement um, execute all right and then we're just all we have to do here is just pass in that statement so we've been uh, we set up the statement here and then we prepared it um, and then we've added our binds and now we're just to the statement now statement is going to be something called an object it's full of all kinds of information but our binds are in there and then we're executing that statement with this right here mysql statement execute uh, the next thing that we want to do is um, uh, well first of all let's go ahead down here and we'll, one one thing that we'll want to do is do mysqli underscore uh, statement close when we're done. And that'll clean that up. And then we want to return our result. Okay. Now there's one more thing that we want to do. Uh, and that is this result right here is going to be a Boolean. It's whatever MySQL statement execute returns. And we're going to use that for like our inserts and our updates. But if we need to get rows back, um, we have to do one more thing. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say if not execute only. Now this is where this is this right here. And we, by default, this is going to be false. Um, so this is going to run. But if we pass true in it as a third uh, option, then it won't run. And so we're going to say, hey, if, if not execute only, then we're going to set result equal to um, my SQLI underscore statement underscore get result. And then we're going to pass in that statement. And what that's going to do is run a, f now all this, all these MySQL, I'll, my SQLI functions are built into PHP. So I didn't make any of these up. Um, you, have, you can look at them in the documentation for, on php.net. But basically all this is going to do is we're going to assume that this is a select statement here. And this will get the results of our query. So if we're saying select all from users or something like that, we're going to need to use this. So that's why we're doing this. All right. So that if we don't have any 
errors uh, in this, any syntax errors, this will actually be um, all we need. Now, I need to check something real quick in my reference. So we're not actually doing anything with this prepare um, variable here. So I think we can actually just delete the variable and just run the MySQL statement prepare here. Yeah. Yep. So we can do that um, and that should be fine. So I'm going to save that. The next thing we're going to do is go back to our register.php file and we want to check another underneath our check ballot email. We want to go ahead now and check to make sure it's not already in our database. So let's do check uh, for duplicate email in DB. All right. Um, so we only want to do this if the errors are empty up to this point. There's no reason to do the database call if the other errors uh, have already returned an error. So this will be the last thing that we check here. Um, so if empty errors, uh, then what we're going to do, just to make it a little easier, let's set up some variables. I'm going to set up fn as first name. We don't have to do this, but uh, this, I think this makes the code just a little easier to read. So we're going to say first name. And we'll do the same thing with last name here. And uh, we'll go, do, go ahead and do email and password as well. Oh, wait a minute. I got ahead of myself. Actually, the only one we need right now is email. Sorry about that, guys. So go ahead and delete these two lines. We don't need those just yet. Uh -uh. All right, so we just need our email right here. So we're looking for a post email. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is let's set up, um, let's set up our SQL statement. And remember our SQL statement for selecting is um, all caps here. We're gonna say select star from users now that's lowercase because we call our tables where this should look real familiar from our last uh from our last uh chapter but we want to say where email is equal to now what we want to do here is instead of type putting in this email remember about sql injection we want to just put a question mark right there okay so this question mark is how we're going to bind that parameter um, so select star from users where email is equal to the question mark. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set up um, our binds array here. And this will be equal, uh, we're just going to, inside of this, we're just going to put our email. We only need one uh, single element in this bind because this has to match the number of question marks. Now, if my statement had multiple question marks, I would have multiple elements in this array. But right now, we just have one element in the array and it will bind this uh, to the prepared statement with our function we just created. So then what we're gonna do, uh, we are going to say result equals query. Now that query is the function we just created and we'll pass in our SQL and our binds. So that'll get our results back. Now what's kind of confusing is this gets our results back but this doesn't actually get our row. Um, so we need to extract that row out of there. And what we're going to do is say row is equal to my SQLI underscore fetch underscore associ like that. And that's going to get an associative array of uh, rows from our database. So then we need to pass in our result into that. And then now let's just let's just dump and die this real quick. Uh, so we'll do D and D row. All right. So I save that. Let's go back now and let's just fill this form out. And I'm just going to do uh, Parham Curtis at uh, mailinator.com. Make sure everything passes here. We'll hit register. And uh, right now uh, we got back null. And we got back null <clears throat> because we don't have any rows in our database. So go back to PHP MyAdmin now. 
and go make sure you're in our users table and what we're going to do here is let's go ahead and insert uh, click on insert and we're going to manually add a row to this table so I'm going to add um, Tony Parham and then I'll say Parham Tony at Melanator dot com and for password uh, we'll just put that and then I'm gonna hit go right here and it said one row inserted so if I click browse now we have one row in our database so now if we go back to our login registration here I'm gonna go ahead and try to fill out a form for Tony oops And here's the part that matters. What I want to do is I want this to fail. Um, so I'm going to say Parham Tony at mailinator.com. So we'll hit register. And now you see that this row that we were dump and died, this gets back a row that has Tony here. So it's an array with seven elements in it. Um, so that's that's bad um, so what we want to be able to do is um, we'll come down here now remember when we didn't find one row is null so we can use an if statement here and we can say if uh, row so if there is a row so right now there is one because we had Tony we want to add something to that errors array up here we're gonna add a, an error to our form and we'll say that email address is already in use okay I'll get rid of that dump and die right there so now let's go ahead and refresh which will resubmit our form so we'll hit OK and now you can see that it failed and it says that email address is already in use so let me go ahead and put one in here that's not in use so Parham Curtis and you can see that that passes now um, so if that's the results you're getting, if you, if you check one that's in the database, it should give you an error back. Um, if you put an email address that's not in the database, uh, it should pass. Okay, so if that's set up, then you know that your query method is working. Okay, and you also know that this uh, check here is written correctly if all that happens. Okay, the last thing that we want to be able to do here... Um, Let's see, we're not going to do any more checks. So underneath this if statement, let's just create um, a comment for now that says, uh, we'll say if empty errors, uh, insert into DB. Okay, so our last check here, we'll check uh, if, if it's gotten through all of these uh, validations and the errors are still empty, well now we can assume that it's safe to insert this into the database and register the user. So I think we'll save that for the next video. And so in the next video, we're gonna finish up our, uh, our registration process by adding the user to the database. Uh, and then we'll, after the video after that, we're gonna have to get email going because what we wanna be able to do is um, once the user is registered in our database, we want to send them an email that they can then use to verify that that, that the email was correct. Um, and I'll show you all of that as we go. So I will see you guys in the next video. If you're enjoying this course so far, please comment, like, subscribe. Let, let me know if you had any big aha moments. Uh, let me know if you uh, understood the, the binding now. I will say, uh, just in closing, that that I know that this is a little complicated, um, but I figured uh, for right now, just understand what, kind of briefly what we're doing. I try to explain it line by line, um, but you might just have to go back and read some documentation on the MySQLi stuff in the in the um, PHP.net, and just know that <clears throat> from now on, we're just using this query method. We're not going to really do anything with this stuff. Um, but in the next video, in the next lesson, the next chapter, 
uh, that we go and build another uh, PHP project, we're going to be using object-oriented programming and we're going to be using another way of using a database that I think is a little bit easier to understand. Um, but I wanted to show you guys the, the built-in way uh, that PHP has for us to, to connect with our database. And so that's, this query method is a little bit, um, maybe just a little bit co complicated for new users, but it shouldn't be that bad. But just understand, the reason we're doing all this binding and preparing is because we're trying to avoid SQL injection. And that's exactly what this is going to do. Now people won't be able to execute uh, SQL queries within our form elements by just simply typing some SQL into our form. All right, so you got to make sure you, you protect against that. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.